Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at the new features and the most significant changes that Microsoft have been working on until Windows 10 build 2197 down to 2 build 19608. If you want to learn more about previous changes I will be leaving a link in the video comments to the build 19603. As a reminder, builds in the dev channel are no longer tied to any specific release of Windows 10 so it is not clear when these changes will be available to users. However, some of these changes are already expected to arrive version 20H2 and many others are likely to arrive at some point in 2021. Now let's have a closer look at these changes currently available in the dev channel of the Windows Insider program. A new star menu design with visual changes which no longer focus on live tiles arrives to Windows 10. The new menu follows the same design as the previous version but now it incorporates a more streamlined design that moves from a disorganized color to something more uniform. You will still get in tiles as you can see here, but the star menu now reduces the color of the blocks of each tile using transparency to match the color scheme and uses traditional icon designs that should make it easier to scan and find apps quickly. The new design works with the light and dark color scheme as well as using custom colors using the color settings page. So this is how the menu looks with the dark theme. And this is how it looks with a custom color. As part of the uh, notification improvements, you can now click the app logo to confirm where the notification is coming from and clicking the X button will dismiss it. Windows 10 now also includes a new taskbar experience that offers a cleaner, less cluttered, and more personalized content tailored to your behavior based on the device signal. For example, if you link your Android phone, you will see the Your Phone app pinned to the taskbar. And if you use the Xbox Live account, then you will see the Xbox app pinned into the taskbar. The new experience will be available when created a new account or first login. And the existing taskbar layouts won't change. In addition, since build 2175, Windows 10 is also introducing new modern icons for sticky notes and also for snip and sketch in a continued effort to keep updating the iconography of Windows 10. Although these changes were first introduced in the dev channel, Microsoft is planning to ship them with Windows 10 version 20H2 later in 2020. From this point forward, all the features and changes are only available in the dev channel at the time of this video. As part of the integration between Windows 10 and Microsoft Edge, now all your open apps will appear in the app switcher when you use the Alt Tab keyboard shortcut. As you can see, now we have these three tabs open. And when using Alt Tab, now we can see them on the app switcher. You can always change this behavior on system and in the multitasking page. And then under Alt Plus Tab, you can select to show the five most recent tabs the three most recent tabs you can show only windows or you can even now select the option to show all the open tabs from edge plus windows for example if we select the windows and all tabs now when we use the all plus tab we're going to see all the open tabs on the app switcher Starting with build 2190, Windows 10 introduces a new first run experience using the Tips app to highlight the most significant changes after a major feature update installs on your computer. This feature replaces the Microsoft Edge welcome page after installing a new feature update that will help users better understand the new features and how to use them. So when you install a new Windows 10 feature update, you will see a screen something like this. And depending on the features, you can click through them to see how to work with the new experiences on the operating system. If you don't want to see this after a feature update, you need to turn off the show me the Windows welcome screen option 
on notifications and actions. Microsoft is also working to make it easier to install and update the Windows subsystem for Linux. On future releases of Windows 10, you will just be able to install the Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 just using WS, WSL-install and without having to go through different steps to do the same thing. And when it comes to time to update, you only have to type WSL-update. In addition, the Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 is getting GPU compute, which is a feature that allows the Linux binaries to leverage the graphics card to make it possible to perform more machine learning development in data science workflows directly from WSL. Starting with Bill 2175, Windows 10 also includes the ability to reset universal Windows platform apps using PowerShell commands. This is in addition to the option to reset apps from the settings app. For instance, you can use this command to reset the calculator app. The benefit of this option is to reset certain system components that are not available through the settings app. For example, the start menu. Now let's jump into the changes for the settings app. On Windows 10 build 2197, Microsoft is testing a new web browsing view in the settings app header as you can see right here, to highlight if you're using the recommended browsing settings. Uh, for example, if you're not using Microsoft Edge as the default browser, you will see this dot right here and the restore recommended message. When you click that, it will offer you to switch the web browser to Microsoft Edge if you're using Chrome or Firefox or any other. And then when you come back to the settings, it will tell you that you're using the recommended settings. On Windows 10 build 2190, the graphics settings page has been updated to allow you to select the default high performance graphics processor on your computer. I don't have multiple graphics processors in this computer, so I can show you this screenshot of how that setting looks like. And if you have multiple graphics cards, you can specify which of those GPUs should be the one to be used as a high performance. Also, once you configure the settings, when an app requests for the high performance GPU, by default, it will use a CPU that you specified on this page. Also, the page has changed to allow you to pick the specific GPU on a port application basics using the new specified GPU option, as you can see right here. Let me just zoom this in so you can see that option. In addition, the graphics page will also pre-populate the apps that you might want to change to run on a specific GPU. This is in addition to clicking the browse button to locate the app. Using the settings app, you can now manage more sound options previously available in control panel. For example, now it is possible to see which sound device is set by default and you can select the device that you want to be the new default for Windows 10 if you have more than one. Also in the value mixer, you will now see a link to open the per app audio settings, which you can use to redirect audio endpoints per application. Starting with build 2197, we are getting a new disk management tool inside of the storage settings page. The operating system already has a tool to manage disks and volumes, but it is an old experience part of the control panel. The new experience was built from the ground up with modern improvements. Similar to the legacy tool, which is still available, as you can see right here, just a refresher, this is how it looks like. The tool allows you to view all the drives connected to your computer and you can create, recite, format, and change letters for partitions. For example, in this computer, we can see that we have two hard drives. We can select each of the drives and click the uh, properties to see more information about the drive, such as the, uh, the name, the disk ID, model, media, capacity type. You can also see the status and the partition style. You can also click the advanced disk properties, but that will just open the settings for the drive that is part of control panel 
which in the future might be integrated into this experience. You can also expand the, the drive to see all the partitions in it, and you can select each of the partitions. And when you click the properties button, it will take you to a new page where you can see a lot of information about the drive, such as the name, drive letter, the type file system, which is in this case is the NTFS, the status, and you also get the option to change the label. So right now it's uh, Windows. So let's put like uh, Windows 10 and then click apply and you will see that that now will change the dry, dry label. You can also change the drive letter, but of course uh, this is drive C, we can change it, but this is where you will go to, to change the letter for the drive. From the same experience, you can also change the size. Here you will set the, the new amount and that will shrink it or expand it. You also get the option to allow access to the volume using the NTFS path. So you can type it right here. And you can also enable BitLocker if you have a version of Windows 10 that supports that, that encryption. There is an option to view the usage, but that will take you just to the storage sense page to view the usage. If you have an external drive, you will also get the option to, to format and to delete the partition in addition to all the other options. And that's how the new disk management experience looks on the settings app. On Windows 10, the tablet mode page is now simply called tablet. And now the system is changing the notification behavior when detaching the keyboard so that the notification will no longer show and instead it will switch directly into the tablet experience. Also to avoid confusion, the system is removing the tablet mode quick action button from non-touch devices in Action Center that used to appear right right in this section. And now there is a new logic that allows users to boot into the appropriate mode according to the mode they were using before and whether the keyboard was attached. Also since build 2180, Windows 10 is changing the tablet posture logic for convertible devices to now only apply when using a single screen. In About, the page no longer shows the current Windows security status and Microsoft continues to transfer information from Control Panel into the settings app. For example, links that will open the system page in Control Panel will now direct to the About page. Additionally, the About settings page now includes an option to make it easier to copy the device information to the clipboard. Starting with build 2185, Windows 10 is making it a little bit easier to change the network settings using the settings app. For instance, editing the DNS address is now a top level option in the network's properties page, as you can see right here. You can now also configure DNS traffic to be encrypted using HTTPS, also known as DOH, in the network properties page to increase privacy and security of your browsing activities. To configure DNS over HTTPS, you will need to use one of the supported addresses, which they can be from Cloudflare, Google, or Quad9. In this example, I'm going to use this address and I'm going to paste it on the preferred DNS field which that will enable the encryption options. From here, you can select not to use encryption, to use only encryption, or to prefer using encryption, but also allow traffic to go without encryption through the internet. So if you want exclusively to use DOH, select the encrypted only option, and then click the save button. You can use custom addresses that are not on this list, but you will need to use command prompt to configure it on the adapter. Also, you can quickly tell that you're actually using DNS over HTTPS by looking right next to the address on the setting because it will read encrypted. So for example, right now, if we change that to something else, let's say,
you will see that it's a valid DNS address, but it's encrypted. Starting with Windows 10 build 20.197, the Your Info Settings page has now been updated to only show the active profile picture. In the past, you will also see two additional pictures that you used in the past, which you can switch back and forth. Finally, in the Privacy Settings page, you will now see a new programmatic screen capture page that allows you to control which apps can capture arbitrary windows or displays on your computer. And that's pretty much all the features that Microsoft has been working on for Windows 10 since April 2020. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.